there's specific stories that became bigger than what they are to me because not so much because of what happened in that story, but because of the the lesson learned from it. So that's kind of what I wanted to focus okay. on today for the most part. If you're yeah. cool with that. Is that yeah, what, no, that's awesome. Is, I, is that what you got from my I message? Like, I, yeah. When you mentioned the Back to the Future, I thought that another aspect of it was the fact that his dad also learned how to stand up for himself. Yes. But then the overall arching theme of the whole the trilogy, in fact, that's what Christopher Lloyd kind of said on the third one, your, your future isn't written yet, but also the fact that your decisions have lasting consequences. Yes. Some for good, some for bad, but we don't really know where that's going to go because I'm sure you've been parts, had things happen in your life and like, why did I do that? Yeah. Or what would have been like if I would have done X? Or you've had things that seem catastrophic, and then you look back two years later and you see how it actually put you in a proper direction. Exactly. Or the the theory that you've probably heard this stati- statistic that 98% or 95% of the things you worry about either don't happen or it's not as bad as you – it ends up being not as bad as what you thought it would be. Right. But yet we worry about – Yeah. Well, someone's telling me it was like – and I, I got better at this – I'm not better. I'm not over it yet. But the idea being like, when you worry about a thing, now you've got two problems. And worrying about worrying. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, you know what? I need to quit doing that. So we talked about Back to the Future was one that you were really impacted by. Are there some other either movies or books, comic books that really impacted you? That's some, wow, this is a big life lesson. Yeah. So for me, like growing up and, and, you know, to give a little bit of backstory for people who don't know maybe my backstory, a lot of the stuff was kind of like hands off. My mom was very kind of put off by a lot of this stuff. A lot of depictions of violence or extreme kind of weird in her mind. It just didn't, she didn't want me to kind of partaking of this stuff. So for me, I had to get it in tiny pieces, little stolen glimpses here and there. And so over time, you know, even if you're just kind of paying attention kind of loosely, you can kind of start put filling in the gaps and seeing where things are. For me, and then over time, she kind of relented. She's like, oh, okay, how bad it is. How bad is it for she yeah, the fight. She gave up the fight. She would confiscate my G.I. Joe's guns, though. All my G.I. Joe's, no guns. All knives? Fist, all fist fights. Knives were okay. Okay. For some reason, guns were like a big no-go for her. The knives, swords were okay. I think so much swords were okay. I don't remember a ton of knives. Oh, no. Knives were a no-go. Because oh. I got I got like a Tarzan jungle knife. It was like a plastic knife for my birthday. And then when all the guests, like a friend gave it to me. And then when all the guests left, she took it away. <laughs> she took it away. Chopped it to pieces. Wow. But oh, well. so you asked what else stood out to me specifically. And this is where it is kind of tri- uh, uh, a trite, I guess. But for all of us, the notion of X-Men, these this group of people who felt different, who stood out for whatever reason. Uh, for me as a kid, moving the way I did uh, a lot, I felt like I was constantly st- stood out. Okay. You get into um, what else was one that jumped out to me. Batman was hard because uh, his story is so tragic. As a kid, yeah. you can only you can only abstractly kind of do that. Like, man, what are my parents? Billionaire that lost his parents. Right. Not not a lot of relation going on there. Exactly. I'll tell you what. Other I, than the fact he didn't have superpowers. Well, other than he was rich. Yeah. According to Ben Affleck. So. I, exactly. <laughs> that, that's his only power. And granted, this is this is also hard to relate to. But Optimus Prime in the 1986 uh, animated Superior movie in my in my mind. <laughs> no, you know, don't let Michael Bay hear that. I know, right? Uh, he knows it. <laughs> he lays awake at night staring into the sky like, I know it. I'm garbage. Uh, Optimus Prime, spoiler alert, sacrifices himself for the, for the good of his entire group and for arguably the, you know, universe. Up until that time, as a little kid, at least, I was an, I wasn't even 10 yet. I was nine. The notion of somebody or something that you identified so closely with making a decision that puts them in harm's way. And I don't want to take away from kids who did experience it. I'm sure there's, there's lots of kids growing up who lost a parent in that same way who were like, dude, you did it with Optimus Prime. I have a real kid. But as a kid, for me, without having had experienced that firsthand, just the notion that this was up there, I had a strong emotional reaction to that. Not so much he's dead, but like why he's dead. Yeah. And the brutality, frankly, in which they killed that guy off. He was beaten to death. It wasn't even like he didn't get shot and it was over with. I mean, he just got, it was like a knockdown, drag out. Sure. Slugfest. 